Hey guys, you ever heard of Walt Disney's The Art of Animation? Well, when Walt Disney was doing his show, Walt Disney's Disneyland, he had this book called Walt Disney's The Art of Animation, supposedly by the staff of the Walt Disney Studios. And while it wasn't the first animation book in the history of animation books, that title belonging to animated cartoons by E.G. Lutz, it may have been the very first art of book in the history of art of books. It was shown in three episodes, the story of the animated drawing, the plausible and possible, and tricks of our trade. According to Walt, the book was a pet project of the studio at the time. It seemed to have been as big as the illusion of life and paper dreams. But the strangest thing is, the book looked old, even back then. How long was that book in the making at the time? Well, if what's in this box is what I think it is, this will be one of the best days in my life as an animation book collector. Well, let's see what it is. Well, it's an art of animation book. Just not the one I was hoping for. Well, I hope you weren't actually expecting me to have the real art of animation book. I mean, it is April Fool's Day, and the first day of Autism Awareness Month. According to many websites, specifically the D23 website, the book was supposedly a prop and was not a real book. I know that, but it doesn't change the fact that every time I see pictures of the book through the archives, or through a clip of someone who works at the archives going through it, with bookmarks, mind you. They still treat it as if there's valuable secrets and information inside of it that they're hiding from us. So even though they say it isn't real, they still made it. It's still a real book. And my general rule for book reviews is that I have to own the book, either physically or digitally, in order to review it. So what am I going to do? Bail out? It is April Fool's Day, after all. But then again, this book I got might have some similarities to the real art of animation book. So for this instance, I'm going to make an exception, but wouldn't that make this a fake review? I could call it a faux view, and I mean faux as an F-A-U-X. Well, guess I'll do that then. So to get us started, let's talk about what I do know about the original art of animation. The first two chapters of the book shared the history of animation at the time, dating all the way back to 30,000 BC, back when cave paintings were used for storytelling. Then it goes into the Egyptian murals from 2000 BC. It even takes Leonardo da Vinci's drawing of human proportions and makes it dance. It even acknowledged an animation that was made before Disney came along. Such as humorous phases of funny faces, done by J. Stuart Blackton in 1906, and Windsor McKay's Gertie the Dinosaur. It even shares some insight about the pioneers of animation, including J.R. Bray, who invented the basic patents for animated cartoon production. There was also a little bit of information regarding the loss of Oswald the Lucky Rabbit and the creation of Plain Crazy in the end of Chapter 2. Chapter 3 talks about sound, which opens up with a screenshot of Steamboat Willie. Whatever Chapter 4 was about remains a mystery, but based on what little of it was seen, which was about anticipation and timing, it can only be assumed that Chapter 4 was either about the animation process or about the then budding, 12 basic principles of animation. But for some reason, in all three pages of chapter 4 that are shown, the section on anticipation is repeated once, while the section on timing is repeated twice. Also, at the end of the section on timing, it appeared that the book was solely meant for in-studio use, because it tells whoever's reading it that if they have any questions, make note of them, and someone, probably Walt, would answer them on some Thursday night, Chapter 5 talks about the elusive 13th principle of animation, the plausible and possible. According to that principle, whatever seems impossible to be done in real life, such as eating a whole buffet of food by yourself, or getting squashed while riding in an elevator, is plausible, also known as possible, in animation. This is more of a storytelling principle of animation, along with staging, solid drawing, and appeal. 
why the plausible and possible wasn't included as one of the principles of animation in The Illusion of Life, we may never know. Chapter 6 and 7 are also a mystery, because nothing of chapter 6 and 7 were ever shown. And what very little of chapter 7 that was shown could barely be made out, because the text was all blurry in the video I saw it in. But chapter 8 was titled Tricks of Our Trade, which goes over how animators taught themselves, how they use live figure drawing for their cartoons, how dialogue helps show thoughts and feelings, as well as showing off the multi-plane camera, as well as showing how various animators experimented with different effects to get their timing right. The episode of Walt Disney's Disneyland that showed Chapter 8 also showed a very badly animated dance of Doc from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And by badly, I mean the top of him looked mechanically animated while the legs moved. Something that you'd mostly see in UPA cartoons. And you want to know what the saddest thing is? Animated cartoons by E.G. Lutz was easily accessible online. Meanwhile, the art of animation, the book that Walt created as a way of teaching animation, is completely inaccessible. Only eight chapters of the original book were known, but how many chapters there really were, we may never know. Well, we may have a clue. While I was reading Paper Dreams, I found out that a manuscript of the art of animation was being worked on in July 20th, 1955 by Don Graham. When searching for information about the manuscript, I discovered that it was sold to someone on heritage auctions. Luckily, there were pictures of the contents of the manuscript, which reveal that the book could have included a foreword by Walt Disney himself, and a list of contributors to the book. And while the chapters in the manuscript, the significance of animation, before motion pictures, the new art, animation, layout and direction, color, story, music and animation, the animals, the animator, caricature, and New Horizons differ from the ones shown in Walt Disney's Disneyland. It does indicate that there might have been 12 chapters total in the book, maybe more. And according to the item description on the website, there were more than 200 pages for the manuscript, which is backed up by the fact that the first four chapters of Walt's copy took up 25% of the book, and in Tricks of Our Trade, around the middle of chapter 8, about 66% of the book has been gone through. Though this manuscript and various copies of it were used internally as a reference Bible by the people in the studio, it may have been a prototype of what was shown in Walt Disney's Disneyland. Well, since I'm talking about the prototype anyway, I might as well talk about the details I've discovered about it based on the pictures I've seen of it. Also, there was a newer listing that showed even more information. The first chapter, The Significance of Animation, talks about how important animation is, how it affects how people see and respond to things, and even how the word animation is an all-encompassing term. Chapter 2 discusses what came before motion pictures were made, such as the zoetrope and the praxinoscope. Chapter 3 gives a brief history of animation, and Chapter 4 goes over the process of animation, with the sections What Makes a Move going over the process, reality talking about figure 8 animation, in and out, key poses, holds, moving holds, extreme extremes, and squash and stretch, the analysis of action going over real and apparent actions, primary and secondary actions, the thought process, actions in animals and humans, anticipation, follow through, reaction, overlapping action, expressive action, gesture, expression, and successful animation of dialogue. The truths of the old masters going over the economic limitations of animation drawing. The principles of reasonable shape. Something called the bent mentor, or whatever it was actually saying. The angle, graphic movement, multiple viewpoints, scale, etc. And the feature, going over how the studio was reorganized for feature work. Training artists. The greater reality of feature characters. And the flowering of Disney animation. Chapter 5 goes over layout and animation, the function of the director, cutting and staging, and creative visualization. Chapter 6 is about background design and how it relates to the characters. Chapter 7 goes over the story process with two sections, the storyboard, which goes over early structure, the storyboarding technique, the story conference, and how Disney invented storyboards, and building the feature, which stresses the importance of personality and believable characters, story and graphic research, Test animation, the script, and previewing the story before a studio audience. 
which is basically the story pitch. Chapter 8 talks about the integration of music, sound effects, and dialogue into drawing. And 3 approaches the fitting action with music. Chapter 9 goes over the transition from cartoony animals to lifelike animals. Probably referring to how Snow White's animals looked uh, less accurate than the ones featured in Bambi. Chapter 10 goes over how an animator must be an actor, a story person, an administrator, a teacher, and a cooperative member of the group. It also goes over character and effects animators. Chapter 11 talks about extending the meaning of caricatures and animation as an art form. And chapter 12 talks about the future and potential of animation. Again, while not exactly the same chapters as shown in Walt Disney's Disneyland, it is a very strong indication of how useful the art of animation might have been, especially for all those aspiring animators. And while the official book says that it was by the staff of the Walt Disney Studio, this prototype does show that Don Graham was the rightful author of the book. The fact that this book wasn't available to buy in bookstores frustrated many aspiring animators at the time. And all these years later, I feel that frustration that they felt. Who's keeping track of all this important information anyway? Why can't Disney just let us have this information so we can all better ourselves as animators? Are they afraid that if we had this information, we'd use it for purposes that don't involve getting a job at Disney? Probably not. Because around the same time as the real art of animation's debut on November 30th, 1955, Disneyland's Art Corner in Tomorrowland had a little pamphlet. A little pamphlet called Walt Disney's Tips on Animation. And it pretty much gives the bare minimum of what you need to know on animation drawing. However, Walt must have noticed the demand for the book. Because in 1957, Walt Disney himself asked Bob Thomas to write a book with the title. Then, a year later, the first viable version of The Art of Animation was released. I wish I could say this was a good thing. But unfortunately, it just wasn't the same as the real deal. The only thing the 1958 version of The Art of Animation had in common with the original version is that sound was chapter 3, but as for the rest of the chapters, it all falls apart afterwards. No chapters on the history of animation, no chapter on the plausible impossible. All the chapters in that book were based on steps taken during the making of an animated film, such as writing the story, making the characters, creating the sound, creating the music, things about the direction, layout, animation, backgrounds, the color. There was even a chapter that went over the films that were being made at the time, including 101 Dalmatians, The Sword in the Stone, and The Jungle Book, which were the last three films that Walt was involved with. There was also another art of animation book by John Canemaker, the author of Paper Dreams, which was called Walt Disney's Nine Old Men and the Art of Animation but that book was more of a predecessor to the Nine Old Men book by Andreas Deja. Then, sometime in the 1990s, a new version of the Art of Animation book was created, and by the same author too, Bob Thomas. While the 90s version was closer to the original book in the regard that the first two chapters were about the history of animation, everything afterwards just goes over the different eras of Disney movies up until Beauty and the Beast. Okay, so you may remember my Beauty and the Beast video from November. Well, the making of Beauty and the Beast was actually included in the Beauty and the Beast version of this book. However, the version I have goes up to Hercules. There's even a making of Hercules section in this book, just like the Beauty and the Beast version got. According to the acknowledgments, parts of the original art of animation are included in chapters 1 through 7 of the 90s book. But you want to know something cool? This book has a hologram effect. According to the back of this book, this book was originally $45. I wish they had made a third one, but that'll never happen because sadly, 10 years ago, Bob Thomas passed away. Some of you might be wondering, why would I spend my time reviewing a book that doesn't actually exist? My reason is to spread awareness of the book. To get all my fellow animators and animation fans to clamor for this book to actually exist. To clamor for this book to actually become a reality. To make it loud and clear to whoever's in charge of Disney publishing that we want Walt Disney's The Art of Animation on our bookshelves. That we've waited 70 long years for the book to become a reality. 
And the fact that they had the audacity to put in Once Upon a Studio, they owe us for that. So we can compare it to the likes of The Illusion of Life and the other great animation books that are out there that help us learn animation when animation school isn't possible. And when the day comes when that book finally does become a reality, I'll revisit this video and do a proper review of the art of animation. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Happy April Fool's Day. Happy Autism Awareness Month. And I'll see you next time.